The head-to-head -head battle of the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR XB versus the Asus Zephyrus G14 has arrived, and I've run each of these laptops through 14 plus creator Focus benchmarks, covering video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and more. And although these laptops are massively different in size, I'm very interested to see which 8-core 16-thread processor will come out on top. Will it be the Ryzen 4900HS or the Intel i7-10875H? Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If you're curious about the availability or pricing of either of these laptops as we're going through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase of that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Jumping right into the build quality, both laptops have very different appearances. The Aero 17 with its discreet matte black top cover and the Asus Zephyrus G14 with its matte white LED infused top cover. Concerning the build quality, my vote swings toward the Zephyrus G14 with its magnesium alloy top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck. The Aero 17's CNC aluminum top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck are spot on, but the side panels and back panel are plastic, which is why the Zephyrus G14 excels with its all magnesium alloy chassis. Those side panels and back panel are continued magnesium alloy. Each laptop comes with a generous supply of ports. However, I will say the SD card slot on the Gigabyte Aero 17 is really showing some love to videographers and photographers. So if I was going to pick a laptop based only on the ports, I would go for the Aero 17. As I open the lid on each of these laptops, I'm able to do so with one hand. The hinges are smooth and strong. There's only a slight bit of screen flex on the Zephyrus G14 and nearly zero screen flex on the Gigabyte Aero 17. Again, my hat is off if I was wearing one. Uh, for the Aero 17, this is especially interesting because the Aero 17 has such a larger screen and a larger uh, bottom uh, bezel that you would think it would flex more than the smaller screen, but it doesn't. That is a great build from Gigabyte. Before we move on to the screen quality, I want to discuss the ventilation of these two laptops. Both the Zephyrus G14 and the Aero 17 have generous vents for cooling. They both have vents on the bottom cover, behind the keyboard deck, and on both side panels. However, the Aero 17 also has a vent on the top of the keyboard deck, which you will find later in the video increases the ability for it to run cooler than the G14. How noisy are these fans and how well do they cool? the laptop during the benchmark test coming up later in the video. At idle, the Aero 17 kicks up to around 37 decibels, whereas the G14 gets a little bit louder at 43 decibels and remains there for the most part while doing some light web browsing. During the 4K video editing export in Premiere Pro, the Aero 17 ramps up to about 56 decibels and the Zephyrus G14 gets a little bit louder at 60 decibels. During the DaVinci Resolve export, the fans on the Aero 17 were at 56 decibels and the G14 was at about 59 decibels. Now for the Photoshop benchmark test, the Aero 17 was at 54 decibels and the G14 at 61 decibels. Now to check how well the fans did cooling the components during these different tests, here are the benchmark results. All right, now that we have covered these details, let's get into the screen quality. The Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR XB comes with a 17.3 inch 4K display that reaches 60 Hertz, and at full brightness, it can reach 531 nits. With a color gamut range of 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB, and 89% DCI P3, all at an average Delta E of 0.48, which is just a stellar screen, and this is all Pantone validated from the factory. For a gaming laptop, this is fantastic, uh, but I must say the Zephyrus G14 is no slouch. The Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with a 14 inch Full HD 16 by nine display that can reach 120 Hertz. At full brightness, it can reach 330 nits with a Pantone validated color gamut range of 96% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB and 76% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E of 1.27. The Zephyrus G14 comes with a standard basic keyboard layout, whereas the Aero 17 comes with a keyboard that includes a numpad. Personally, I prefer the non-numpad keyboards, 
but both keyboards are nicely laid out and have good key press. It is soft and snappy. I will note that the Gigabyte Aero 17 is slightly quieter while typing and has an excellent soft touch material on the keys. So if you're in an office or classroom setting, that will be a benefit to you. However, I will say that regarding the backlighting, the Gigabyte Aero 17 is definitely the clear winner in this category. It has a constant and bright keyboard light that offers great contrast for easily identifiable keys in the dark. It is also the only one in this head-to-head -head battle that has RGB lighting, which can be controlled by Gigabyte's command center. The Asus Zephyrus G14 has light leaks on the sides of the keys, inconsistent backlighting, showing through the keys, and in the dark, this silver gray contrast is a little tough to see when typing. But if you, like me, took a typing class in college, then there's no need to see the keys, right? So how it looks really doesn't matter, it's just how it feels beneath your fingers. Okay, that's up to you. I don't know what truly matters most to you, but for me, I'd like to see the keys. <laughs> Both the Asus Zephyrus G14 and the Aero 17 come with an all-in-one trackpad with the click built in. I will say that I favor the Aero 17 trackpad as it is much larger than the G14s. Um, it is right to consider that the G14 is a whole 3.3 inches smaller concerning the screen, which takes away from a good portion of the available measurements for the keyboard deck making the trackpad smaller. But nonetheless, I like its size more. However, both trackpads have a nice smooth, firm click when pressed, and accurate click as well as touch gesture. So either way, um, you will be satisfied with the trackpad, but I will point out that the click on the Aero 17 is quieter and less clicky. Take a listen to each the keyboard and the trackpad in use. If you're needing a laptop to attend virtual meetings, then you are going to want to pick the Aero 17 as it is the only one with a 720p webcam in this head-to-head -head battle. Concerning the on-the-go capability of these two laptops, the Asus Zephyrus G14 weighs in at 3.53 pounds and at a thickness of 0.7 inches thick, whereas the Gigabyte Aero 17 weighs in at 5.51 pounds at a thickness of 0.84 inches thick. Concerning the battery life, the Asus Zephyrus G14 will get around nine and a half hours of web browsing and about six to seven hours of design and video editing battery life out of its 76 watt hour battery. Whereas the Aero 17 will get roughly six and a half to seven hours of web browsing and about four to five hours of design and video out of its 94.24 watt hour battery. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, ever so gently press down on that like button and let me know how you're planning on using this laptop by dropping a comment in the comment section below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. On to the main event, the performance benchmark test between the Asus Zephyrus G14 and the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDRXB. The Asus Zephyrus G14 I'm reviewing comes with the Ryzen 9 4900HS with 8 cores and 16 threads, and the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. 16 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Whereas the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR comes with the i7-10875H with eight cores and 16 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super Max Q with eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. Jumping right into the 3D modeling benchmark test, let's take a look at how these two laptops handle Autodesk and a few other programs. The G14 did the Autodesk 3ds Max with a score of 136.15, and the Aero 17 scored a 168. The G14 had an Autodesk Maya score of 158.43 and the Aero 17 crushing it with a 213.75. The G14 had a PTC Creo score of 129.16, the Aero 17 a 168.88. The SolidWorks score on the G14 was 71.36 and the Aero 17 86.84. So it's pretty clear that the Aero 17 dominated in 3D modeling, showing that the Intel i7-10875H with the RTX 2070 Super Max Q was a big leader in this category. Moving on to motion design, I'm using the Puget Systems After Effects Benchmark and the After Effects Render Benchmark. Per the charts, you can see that the Aero 17 pulled slightly ahead of the G14, but not by much. The Aero 17 scored an 806 over the Zephyrus G14's 775. Once again, we see the Gigabyte Aero 16 pull ahead with a score of 652 over the Zephyrus G14's 
614 on the render as well. Just before moving on to the video editing test, let's take a look at the performance of these laptops in Adobe's design suite by benchmarking them with the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Both laptops perform well, capturing an equally suitable position on the chart, making each of these laptops a great fit for Photoshop, Illustrator, and design. But do note that the Aero 17 was able to pull off a slightly better score, snagging a 788 over the G14's 688. Now on to my favorite benchmark test, the video editing. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm gonna take a nine minute 4K clip, add some motion graphics, and then play it back in the timeline at full quality. This full clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. The Asus Zephyrus G14 can play back full quality 4K footage in Premiere Pro with only three drop frames. And the Gigabyte Aero 17 received nearly the same results on the playback test. It can play back full quality 4K footage in Premiere Pro timeline with only four drop frames. Tomatoes, tomatoes, maybe it was just a test. They basically perform the same. Considering that I was only running Premiere Pro during these tests, you may see slightly higher drop frames while multitasking, but you can easily switch to half or fourth quality to continue to get smooth playback in the timeline. Concerning rendering out the motion design effects, I was able to render out the 7,240 frames in just three minutes and six seconds using the Zephyrus G14 and a bit faster at two minutes and 43 seconds out of the Aero 17. Both are impressive times, for that render test. Moving on to the 4K test, I'm going to take a nine minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The G14 Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export took three minutes and two seconds, and the Aero 17 took two minutes and 57 seconds. Premiere Pro 4K to 1080p export out of the G14 was two minutes and 43 seconds, and the Aero 17 was three minutes and 22 seconds. For the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K export, remember we're using the free version. The G14 did that in 7 minutes and 55 seconds. And again for 4K to 4K out of the Aero 17 was 8 minutes and 27 seconds. For the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p export, it took the G14 4 minutes and 23 seconds and the Aero 17 5 minutes and 3 seconds. Now regarding the thermal performance during the 4K video editing test, you can see that the Zephyrus G14 is running at 87 degrees Celsius during the stabilized temps and the Aero 17 is running substantially cooler at 76 degrees Celsius. And here is the component usage of each of these laptops during the key benchmark tests of this video. And if you're curious how the Ryzen 9 stacks up against the i7-10875H for single core and multi-core performance, here are the Geekbench and Cinebench R20 scores. If you're looking for a high performance all aluminum Ryzen 9 laptop with solid color accuracy, great benchmarks and all the tests performed and a distinguished build quality, then I would pick up the Asus Rogue Zephyrus G14 for your on the go creator machine. However, if you're looking for an aluminum 17 inch laptop that performs cool and quiet while getting great benchmark results in Photoshop, video editing, 3D modeling, motion design, all packed within a bright color accurate screen, then I will snag the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR XB, which I will say is one of the most thin and light 17 inch laptops with this type of performance I've ever personally seen. If you're curious about the exact availability of each of these laptops, or if you want to make a purchase, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. If you do use that to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want more videos about the Asus Zephyrus G14 or the Gigabyte Aero 17, you can click or tap the screen over there. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.